Well, hello. Uh, thank you for staying this late. Has anybody here ever used Java? All right, cool. Lots of hands. Me too. Um, so I'm going to be talking about PID autoscaling and how we use it. Uh, so first off, what is a PID controller? Well, from control theory, a controller is any algorithm designed to maintain desired state of an error-prone system. There's a couple key components. The set point would be the desired state you want to maintain. The process variable would be the actual observed state. The error would be the difference between the two. So if you want to maintain 80% CPU utilization and you're somewhere around that, but not exactly. And then the control variable would be what you can change in the system to minimize the error and get where you want to be. And what's special about PID controllers are the three components of error that are being used. So um, I'll kind of explain why the, the all three, using all three is important. So here we have a stable system, and then I introduce some error by changing the set point. And if you're using proportional only control, then the error response will only be proportional to the size of error. And in such cases, you may have overcompensation, oscillation, and it may not even converge where you want it to. So to at least account for the convergence problem, we can add an integral component. And that looks at the accumulation of error over time and we'll eventually take care of any steady state error in an error system. But we still want to take care of this um, oscillation as well. So for that, we add the derivative component that looks at the rate of error change. So at the beginning of this curve, you see a, a quick decrease in error that's associated with a very negative derivative component, which would act to counterbalance or dampen the proportional amount, which gets us to our set point uh, relatively quickly. So then how do we use uh, PID autoscaling at Strava? So we deploy a lot of our infrastructure on Mesos, and uh, this would just be an application container running as a Mesos task. And the shape of those deployments will be orchestrated with Marathon. So here's just one sample deployment, and it'd be driven by a PID controller service. And in this example, let's propose that we have a set point of latency of 500 milliseconds. So we expect the request to be serviced in 500 milliseconds. That gives us our set point. Now we need the process variable so we can observe what's happening. And for that, we would use Linkerd. It's a great piece of software that has a lot of benefits, including automatic load balancing across all of its replicas, um, automatic retries, circuit breaking. But I want to focus on the Prometheus integration. So Linkerd can automatically export metrics, Prometheus-style metrics, based on the services it's proxying. And we use that, um, along with some application-level metrics to um, get a good sense of what our topologies are doing in production. Um, so that gives us everything we need to have a feedback loop for our PID controller. So traffic will come in. Say we have increased traffic or a spike then the observed latency may um, spike as well, as seen by Linkerd. And that would result in error in the PID controller service, which would try to correct that error with an auto-scaling event, say, changing the control variable, the number of instances, from three to five. So now we are scaling against these five replicas as opposed to the, the three before. And theoretically, that should bring latency back down where we want it. And this is kind of a holistic picture, uh, an entire Mesos cluster we may run. So there's many microservices all proxied through Linkerd. And all of those proxies and all the services are sending metrics data to Prometheus, which in turn can be used by the PID controller to make auto-scaling decisions and make sure we're not under-provisioned, over-provisioned, et cetera. Um, and I got through about four minutes without even saying the word Kubernetes, so I'm going to fix that now. Um, you can also do something similar with Kubernetes. Uh, a couple of key differences would be it wouldn't necessarily be a marathon deployment, but you'd have a Kubernetes deployment object. And then here I've kind of illustrated running um, in a host-based Linkerd model. You may opt to do a sidecar pattern, so the application container and the sidecar are running in the same pod. And finally, you can't use our super awesome PID controller just yet. You would use the Kubernetes horizontal pod autoscaler, which uses a different algorithm and a Prometheus implementation of the custom metric server. And there's a link down there that um, goes into more details. And that's about all I'll say on this. I will say there is a talk um, by some, an engineer at Buoyant, I think his name is Thomas, that will be talking about uh, essentially 
running uh, scaling in Kubernetes, so you can get more details there. Thank you.